Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaeus with Discolata again here talking about um, using UI automation. And today we're going to show you a little workaround on how to automate Chromium based tools. This is when you can't get a handle to it, and we're going to demonstrate using tree walkers, better known as Ents from Lord of the Rings. No, <laughs> <with that>. <laughs> <laughs> and if you stick around till the end of the video, you're going to understand why you don't necessarily want to use this approach for everything instead of the other ones we've talked about, because there's some differences in, in how you'd use them. And actually, uh, I would say it's just mainly a work around. And it's based on something that we saw on the previous yeah. videos, yeah. which it's was with Skype. Right. right, it is definitely a work. Right? Yeah, and it's a really solid video, I think, for helping you with work through some troubles. Uh, enjoy. Cheers. Oh, and don't forget, please like. Like the video. Really. <laughs> we're going to dance for it. <laughs> All right, so we're jumping into Skype or some of the issues with Skype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Skype is a tricky one, that is, yes. Uh, so, uh, so far we have uh, taken a look at uh, two different methods of uh, getting to uh, uh, child elements of window. We have uh, used uh, element from handle uh, to yes. get the window from the window handle, and we have used uh, get root element, and then uh, third root, right? Well, we got the root and also get element from point, which is like whatever, where your mouse is, I can get the element that is yes. below and, it. And element from point. Right. And there are actually two other ones uh, we still haven't covered. Uh, so one is get focused element, okay. uh, which, which does exactly what the name says. And uh, the second is element from I accessible, uh, which when it will work at some point, it should get uh, an uh, element from an ACC object. Right so, and, and yeah, so 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 yeah. you, um, Joe, you remember the ACC library, right? Yeah, that threw the me ACC right library creates what is called an iAccessible object. It's an interface for an accessible object, right? Now, yeah. um, notice that the inspector tool that we usually use have this this drop down that you can select the M ACC, which is the the ACC library or the UIA library, right? So the UIA library has the ability of accessing the old I accessible object as well. So that is something that comes with the, AC, the, the new UIA library. So it is, it, is backward, it is backwards compatible, technically, is what I'm trying to say. So, so, um, so far, uh, I haven't uh, played around with it at all. Um, I, I don't think it works at the moment. Mm. Uh, I, I haven't touched the, the original implementation of it, but uh, yeah. Uh, if, if anyone get, gets it working, just um, comment the YouTube video or, <laughs> or, or yeah, write a, a post in the forum, right? Yeah, that's totally fine too. So yeah, it's true. Actually, the fact that um, uh, some people that might be playing with this might have the answer already, or they can tell us how to use it. That'll be great because even though I, I have worked with a lot of automation in other sense. Um, the uh, I have never really played with the UI automation. This is the first time that I'm playing with it, so I'm just learning along <laughs> as I play with the with, with, with different you know examples. And this time you sent me actually a little bit of code that we're going to test right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start sharing my screen um, to show the, the code that you actually sent, and we can take a look at what you were actually just referring to. So, so the trouble with Skype. <laughs> is that the element from handle doesn't work, right? Right, because we cannot access the to the handle of the the um, of but that you, executable you can, for some reason. You can get the window element, but you cannot get the content of it. Right. Because Skype is a Chromium app, and the Chromium part of it doesn't show up at all. Right. And, and the same and, and, problem is, uh, is with the get root element. We still cannot find any of the child elements inside the content. Right, but, exactly. But we have seen that the your view, uh, viewer works. Yes, exactly. This means that the uh, element from point works. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that the get focused element works as well. Okay, so, so that's that's the part that we're looking at here on line 10, that yeah. um, if we actually take a look at the original code, what we were trying at the beginning, is here, uh, let me just uncomment it so that it's a little bit more visible. We were actually getting the handle to the window and then we were trying to get an element from handle, right? That's what we were trying to do. But the problem is that the handle that I'm getting here does not allow me to list 
or dump all the elements from it. And you came up with a different solution. What your solution, what I'm looking at right here is that you are actually um, checking again the handle for Skype, right? Yeah. And then we're going to activate the act the window. Yeah. Once it's active, the main element would be focused automatically is what you're expecting, right? Yeah. So what we're looking for here is getting the focused element. Now, something uh, got my attention here is that you're getting the position of the window. So you're getting the window location. Yeah, that's, um, for the, that's for the next example. So for oh, now, right. just using the get focused element. And okay, perfect. If you want to debug uh, whether it's working yeah, or not, sure. let, let's just try it out. If it works, right. it's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the script. As you can see, um, Skype got activated. So I know that the script is working. Let's go ahead and close it again. Um, and let me do something. Hold on. Um, Let's make it a message box this time for now, so that I could actually just see it. Uh, my, yeah. so I think I I'll try that. Oh, uh, maybe is this what I have to get, like the focus element instead of the EL? Yes, yes. Right, exactly. okay. So I'm gonna get this one here, and let's try it again. So I will run the script. Um, so you don't have Skype open, right? Right, it's true. Uh, yeah, it is It is around. Let me see if minimizing it would work. Right, okay. So it did bring it to the, to the front, but right yeah. now so I did not get this part. Let me do a catch just in case. Um, message box. Um, again, element failed, for example. Because I, I don't know if this is the part that actually failed. No, so it didn't fail, but I'm not getting any info here. So can you, um, the first element, uh, get focused element, uh, see whether that got any element at all? Right. I'm going to try to Let's kind of like... try that out, whether that works. Right. So we know that element of point works, but we don't actually know whether get focused element Right. Works. No, so the EL came back empty. Probably, be so this particular line fails right here. So now... Probably it's because of this guy, because this has a different name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, so let's go ahead and um, um, so yeah, let's try, try again. again. Right. So this time, the EL, now I did get an element. Yeah. So let's go ahead and not do that anymore. See? It's taking a long time to show me that message box this time. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now we got the whole thing. So we got the whole shebang. So basically, yes, it works. So it actually brings Skype into the front. Mm -hmm. um, and then after it's there, now I can take a look at, and actually almost everything. Look at this. The, and now let's just, let's just go ahead and um, output debug it this time. Uh, sorry. So yeah, this, so this method only works um, right after activating Skype, right? Because right, you because yeah, the focused element and Skype right. needs to focus for that. So yeah, that's exactly. All the conditions. Right. So what I'm going to do? Let me save it into my clipboard. It's going to say done when it's finished. Okay. Now I go to um, a new window, paste it. And this is the reason why, and, and um, this is a very good example as to why is a good idea to kind of like limit your search, not just grab the whole thing, like the whole pane, because just this part here is showing 300 and something elements, right? And um, it might be more than that, because there are some elements that are hidden and that will be showing up later. But as you can tell here... Um, but There's at the some, same time, for discovery purposes, it's fine, right? Yeah, for discovery purposes, it's just great. But in general, um, once you know what you're looking for, don't go ahead and use this function over and over again because it takes a long time to load. Um, for example, if what I'm looking is just for the info here or, you know, whatever, the name or whatever it is, I want to know my, my, my credit, for example. I want to know what my balance is, and I want to automate based on that. If my balance is below this point, I want to repurchase automatically or whatever. They give you that option, but say, for example, that you want to automate that. Look at that. I do have 
kind of like an element that tells me exactly how much it is or whatever. I just have to target that element. Now I know that it's the 3.1. I can use the path or I can use other types of methods of kind of targeting it. But um, then I don't have to be dumping everything on again, right? And we feel pretty good that these IDs aren't going to change. That's correct. Right, yes, yes. Yeah. That that particular, this list of IDs, um, especially when you're looking at it like this, this, this path is namely just the order in which those items were created. Yeah, and even if you close Skype and restart it because restart it's part it. of the core program, right? The right. When, when it gets created again, it would be in the same order and it is really likely that when it is always going to stay the same. The only time when it might change is if they make an update to the script or the program sure. and they switch, you know, locations of buttons and stuff like that. But in Let general, it would be very uh, stable. Maybe a dumb question here. So the other day we had a great video walking through a lot of the stuff, which I'd still say anyone that didn't watch that video needs to go back and watch it. But it's a different approach, right? And in Skype in particular, what we were trying didn't work. And so uh, Desclada had actually solved this kind of taking a different approach. My question is, should we, why would we not just use this approach besides the whole fact you have to activate it first? I get that. Um, but why would we not just use this approach, the focus approach, over the other approach? And that way we have one approach. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the, so um, go ahead and... I think uh, that will be answered when we start going over the um, whole uh, script. So what it's actually doing, right? Uh, so the first part is we got the focus element. Now the question is, how do we get the document element, the whole document? So we have a few methods here, uh, but um, but in this case we need to walk the UR tree to get the um, uh, proper parent element. So um, can you can you uh, just open up the code uh, again? Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I I just forgot the name of the path. Um, like UI automation. Um, the uh, find by path or something. Oh, there it is. Yeah, find by path. The, I just wanted to try something with that, but I will do that later. So um, go ahead and uh, call it on element, not UI automation. Uh, yeah, so from the element itself, from the focused element. But that's going to be later. Let's go ahead and yeah. try what you were actually referring to. So actually, here we can um, get into the tree workers, right? Have so, you used this before? Yeah, I do understand what the tree walk, work, walker is, but I have never used it. So the tree walker, um, again, when we get elements from a from a program, right? Um, you have a list of all the elements, and that creates kind of like a parent-child tree. It tells you if the element is a child of a different element, right? Now, once you create it, like this is the tree walker, we could actually loop through it in a very efficient manner with a tree walker. Yes. Is so the tree what walker, they, how they name can, it can, in that uh, library. We can like, take steps in uh, every direction. We can get the child element, we can oh, get the, the next parent. sibling, the previous sibling. The right. Parent, right. Oh, so we can basically, go in all, yeah. All directions. Right. Uh, and, and we can specify um, a condition uh, with which to filter the elements. Right, so which is with the create condition elements, here. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Right. Now let so, me let me let me let me make a little bit of a pause there because I want to kind of like uh, bring that in into something that we already talked about and probably Joe will remember what happened there. Um, some uh, there was a, uh, a conversation that we had yesterday in which we had a button right, and I was telling you there might be a way for us to get the parent of that button because yeah. we had kind of like when we were looking at something. Um, it was an image, but that image was a child element of a button. And I said, like, we could get the, par the parent. Now, what happens is when you're doing a normal search with the UI automation tool, like find first, buy, whatever, it goes linearly forward. It always goes forward from the top of the tree, and it goes down always forward. What creating a tree walker does is that it allows you to not only go forward, but also move backwards, which means that if you get an element, you could walk the tree backwards to the parent element. And that's basically not done by default. 
you have to manually do that. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'd like to add, you know, these are actually Ents. So if you're a Lord of the Ring, you know, person. <laughs> yeah, those are the Ents, exactly. <laughs> no, but basically, and this is actually part of the um, great different, different uh, topics that arise when you're learning about this particular library. Because it is easy for us, for example, when you're working with the DOM, with um, HTML DOM, that you just get an element and say, get the parent. And it's very simple, right? Yeah. Right. But with this type of automation, it's not like that. You can get an element, but you cannot get the parent. Get you actually have to no. create a tree walker first. You know what that which allows you to do that? Is a is in the IWB to learner tool. The tool, if you use it a lot, you could drag it to something, and you can see the high, you can see the parent and everything. But then you'd say, "Oh, let me go get this one," and it would say, "Sorry, you can't. You, you can't gotta, do that. Yeah, you can't access. You have to go redraw the thing to get it to jump to it." But, exactly. Um, you know, but basically, it's basically just think about um, one way of kind of like um, giving the information. Now, another way that is a little bit more common is that instead of create tree walker, just think about it as creating a DOM element. And this is kind of like a DOM element that will allow you to move backwards and forwards. Because usually when you're doing, you, when you get elements the other way around, you're not getting a whole list of elements. You're just getting one element. So it doesn't have information about the parent, child, or siblings. It just now when you create a tree walker, now you have the whole information about the um, the structure of parents, siblings, ch uh, siblings, children, and so on, and it allows you to move back and forth. That's what is yeah. going on there. <laughs> now this this little part here is a little bit complex, um, which is about creating conditions. When you have a tree walker. You, you can create different types of walkers. That's what happens. And you have to create conditions for it. And this section here is something that I have never really understood about creating conditions. So looking at it in action allows me to at least, you know, uh, know <laughs> that where to use it, but it's usually very um, complicated for me to understand. So it is like this condition. I would normally see it like this in other code. You create the conditions first, and then you pass the condition to the tree walker. Now, in his case, he just put the whole function inside of it. But you can create very complex conditions and then just pass the whole thing in there as one big, you know, like you can you can add conditions like and or or not. And yes. you create one condition, and now you create an and condition, like another condition said, um, uh, UI automation, create and condition, for example, create and condition, I think, uh, something yeah. like that, false condition or something. Uh, no, but I, I want to have, sorry. Oh, you are. Ah, there it is. Create and yeah. So yeah. I create an and condition. Now I can pass the original condition as one of them and yeah. now create a second condition and both must be true. So now this new yeah. condition, this and here, this one, when I pass it, it would have condition one and condition two, something like that. So it is a little bit tricky to create whatever you want, but you have to create each condition separately. So you have document and uh, name equals my, okay. my document. So it, you notice that in other functions, we have like an expression that you just type the expression name equals whatever and the, but basically what it's doing is doing this. It's creating different conditions and creating an and condition for that. Can, right? can you add a third per, third and fourth parameter to that and, or is it just two at a time? No, two at a time. For the yeah. and, it's just two at a time. So now if you need another condition, yeah. like yeah. now you will have to create another one right. and two, and you would do the whole thing, but this time you're going to pass the first and as one of the conditions because that whole thing must be true and then a second and in here or whatever. So again, it, it, it might become a little bit unwieldy if you're making very complex conditions. Well, or right. we could build a, a method or something that would actually do this for us, right? Exactly, right. that is right. Fine, um, first five, oh, that's exactly that. Exactly, so some of the functions that we saw, like find first by, it does those conditions for you. And the reason why he said like, yeah, the expression doesn't allow you to use parentheses, 
is because it's really hard to get those parentheses working when you have to do all these conditions yeah, going exactly. on, right? Yeah. So you have to decide which condition is going to be go first and so on. So um, I understand why. But in general, this is a little bit of a topic that if you are diving into it, you will need to understand it. And it is not really that I, simple. I would I would just give it to Maestriath because he's half computer. Yeah, like this. <laughs> He, I don't know how he figures that stuff out, but sometimes you're just like, ah, uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. Right. No, man. I, I, but in general, you need those conditions to go ahead and create the tree walker. So your DOM element will be based on certain conditions. You cannot create a tree walker without a condition. In this case, it was a simple one. It was just create a condition in which control type is equal to document. That's it. Um, yeah. But sometimes so that, if it is a more complex one. If the question might be, where did that document come from, right? Right. Uh, well, um, yeah. So, uh, can you just ahead. open accessibility insights for a sec? Yes, yes. Yeah. By the way, if, um, if anyone wants the parentheses to be supported in the expression, I am open for pull requests on GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can actually code it and just send it back to me. Right. Um, this time, I don't know what happened, but this time, now I put my mouse on top of it and it is giving me the whole document. It was not doing that before. When we were testing last time, I was getting a few empty panes, remember? But now for some reason, now I can access it. Right? Is it did the other way that you accessed it suddenly make it available? Kind, kind of like made it available. It's weird. It might be that, yeah. Yes. Or did you did you use accessibility insights or did you use your viewer? Last time. No, 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 I did not. Actually, I well, Joe knows that I, ha I have lost power like three times today. So the computer was just, it's just restarted. It's totally new. The first thing that I did with Scott is what we did in this video. So basically, uh, for some reason, it's working. That is one of the interesting things that happened. But notice now that uh, when we did the previous video, I had like Skype at the top and kind of like pain, 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 right? So it was actually, let me double check something here. No. Right. And now I'm getting the names like title bar. I didn't get any of those. I, I get a, lo a lot of pains like that. That's what I got. So the, that the lesson learned, if you're going to work with UIA, expect a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to expect a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but in general, in this case, what happens is that now um, yeah. once it's pain, desktop one, pain, Skype, Windows Skype, and then inside we have one that says document. And this happens when it is a Chromium app. Is that true? Uh, yes, exactly. Um, right. For some reason, only in Chromium apps, this problem exists. Uh, in other apps, we can use Elements for handle just fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is that, again, we are accessing just one element. This big box in here is just one element. Yeah. And everything that is inside is just rendered. It's not they they are not controls yeah. like it's in Windows. It's like a web browser. Right. Yeah, it, it is a web browser. And basically, here's the thing. Here, when I when you create an uh, an auto hotkey script, each thing that you can name is kind of like a control and it has a handle. It's kind of like a window. Each of them is a different window with its own handle, and you can actually target each of them individually. When you have a Chromium app, it's not like that. You have one big control that has a, a handle that control has a handle but everything that you see in there is not a control that is actually something that belongs to that particular uh, big window it, it's just being rendered and it's not being identified as separate controls that's what happens now uh, as it is a web page technically you have the dom it has the dom and what we are doing right now is looking at what the DOM exposed. It's not going to expose everything, but it is giving you at least some information out there. I just noticed that the dump all, um, the dump all uh, function that we used in the script is giving me more information than what I can see here in the inspector. Can you see that? Yeah. Like I just I got a few books. The inspector only gives you uh, the, the children of the um, elements you're inspecting, oh, but right. not the but, children of the children. Right? right, exactly. So basically, I think that can be configured. Maybe there is a kind of like a, a how much you want, but uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Next time I will check if that actually has anything to do with it. There, there might be an option that is being toggled or something. 
but basically, yeah, I do understand what you mean. So I'm not only uh, maybe that button has some children in it that I'm not seeing because this is not really showing it. But um, now that I now that we know how how we can get that name, so basically what we did is that we just went ahead and saw that it says document. I could use this, and this says control type. Control type equals document. You see that? So this type of document control is what we are using as a condition here. Control type equals document. Okay. So. And you could you could basically when we do the find first by, it would be the same saying control type equals document. Yes. Only in this case, this wouldn't wouldn't work. Right. right. So the the first the the time when we were trying that it was not working, but in this case it would work because we're doing it in a different way. But basically, creating the condition like this is the same as when we do the expression with the equal sign. It's the yeah. same. Now, yeah. um, now that I have a tree walker, what can I do with a tree walker? I, I noticed so, here that you have like normalized element. Um, yeah. What does that so that's, mean? Uh, that's one of the methods um, in the in the tree tree walker object. Mm -hmm. So, can you perhaps uh, show uh, the um, uh, the UI interface uh, again? Yes, the yes. tree Absolutely. walker class. Uh, you are underscore tree walker. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. So these are the things that we can get. We can get the parent. We can get the first child, last child, next sibling. You know, we, we, we now have a way of growing. And now the normalized element, what does that really mean? Yeah. So uh, the, the problem we're trying to solve here is that... Um, uh, we we got the focused element. The focused element might be anything in the window, right? So it yeah. might be an edit element, or it might be the document element itself. Right. So if if we just uh, got the parent element, we we might not get the um, correct elements because if we are already if we already have the document element and we get the parent of that, we would get the wrong element, right? We want to get the document element. Right. So the normalize element uh, that just uh, uh, checks uh, whether the element itself is already matching the condition, and if it isn't, then it goes up the tree until it finds, I finds it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it is just making sure that I got the right element and not just. But know. how does it know? Sorry, I'm, I'm not understanding that. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I, I, I can tell you that Does that, that you? no, that... no. Well, that that is done by the library itself. So yes. you would have to ask Microsoft about that. But how does it know? You're saying, right? So we we gave it the starting element, but the starting point, right? Right. So and I just uh, told him find that find a control type document. Yeah. Uh, when it gets that, what happens? So so, what it does is that it says. Um, you are library that, hey, I've got this focused element here. Mm -hmm. And I have a condition that I want to find the document element that um, uh, that matches any of the parents or the element itself, right? Right. So no, so so let me let me let me let me let me explain. Let me let me make it a little bit visual in this sense. So basically yeah. when I say when I'm telling it, get the focused element. I don't know what it is. It could be anything, right? So now I just got a focused element and let's, let's call it focused element. And that could be anything, right? When I do the tree walker here, I'm going to create a tree walker based on this condition, control type document. So that is going to give me a tree walker and the tree walker, let's say that I got the document first, document plus its children. That is one option that can happen. But it could happen that the tree walker, when I try to do it, it actually gives, gives me a lot of, you know, button and it gives me something else because what was focused at that moment was a button, not the document, right? It could be any, remember, it could be anything that was focused at that moment. 
So when I'm trying to do the tree walker, the tree walker, now when I say normalize it, is telling me um, based on the condition that I said, like, okay, I got an element, it's a button, but that doesn't match the condition. Let me go up the tree. It will go back and find the first parent, parent, and it's going to say, well, does that parent matches the condition? Is that the document? No. Then keep going up until it finds the document. Once you find the document, which is what I asked you to do online here in this line, when I told you find that, uh, once it finds it, then it says, oh, this is the element that I need. Remove it, just return that. And now you have the normalized, technically focused element. I'm just saying, technically, make sure that the focused element is the document. If it is not, then look for the document and return it to me. Yeah. That's what I'm understanding. Okay, yeah. perfect. So basically, it's I just mean, it doesn't making it, sure. It just gives up and throws an error. Right. right, exactly, exactly. So basically, um, if the focused element is not the document and I cannot find it as a parent, then it would give you an error. Like how the, it's, I can't find whatever you're looking for in this um, element. So I, I again, you would have to get used to thinking this way when you're programming with this library because it's not the normal way how we are used well, to do let me ask a stupid question maybe not a stupid question but I don't know. who cares um <laughs> it, is that something you'd want to do every time and if so why wouldn't you just put that into the original you know right uh, combine them all where they're always it's always done right so this is the one of the things this is uh one of the things that i battle myself when i create a library there are things that the library does it like that and things that I sugarcoat it in a way yeah. like so. And usually I have to think whether I want to match the library as much as possible or if I want to do things a little bit better. Usually the libraries give you many functions that you decide how to use. They don't tell you how to use it. In your case, you just said, like, why don't I have that done automatically? Because there might be some situations in which I don't want that done automatically. And if I use the create tree worker and it already normalizes everything, I cannot do anything about it. So I, I need to leave it like that just because it is like that, give you the option and probably create a new function that does what you're asking. Like, well, that, that's what I'm, that's what I was going to say was right. I need a new one that does allow it. Um, and that right. way as in both worlds, sort of. Yeah, and and, and that's the thing. Then um, that leaps into another topic about, well, then you're not actually creating a library to access the, the functions. You're just creating a new thing. Um, and people will have to get used to the new way how you do it. And it would be confusing when they go to the actual library and they don't find the function that you defined. It would be like a little bit tricky. And that's personal preference. No. Normally what we do is that we do sugarcoat some things. We do have some functions that are sugarcoated, but um, some people don't like that. They just give you the functions that are there. You yeah. create your own. <laughs> yeah, and I think it gets back to who's going to be using it. And right. generally speaking in auto hockey, we have newer type people, right? So mm -hmm. that's where I would be more leaning towards the- For creating point. something that does that point, for right? you. Yeah. And then just say, have both, have, have them separate entirely. Right. There's one with training wheels and here's one that's just- Exactly. And that, it depends on how people want to do it. But oh. generally speaking, um, you, you would have to understand if you're doing this, you have to understand that once you create the tree walker, um, that of that element, the tree walker, is the one that allows you to verify if you got the right element here. After you get the element, you don't know what you got here. So right now, this on line 10, we don't know what the heck we got. Yeah. Now, you just want to confirm that that's the one that you want, then you have to create a tree walker with a condition, and then just normalize it, make sure that you have the correct one, right? So, so now that I have that, let me go to the example that I want us. Um, when we Sorry, don't... just a sec, I says. Okay, yeah. Uh, you asked before what the, the coordinates are for. Oh yeah, uh, true. Location. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, 
if you uncomment the element from point line and uh, comment uh, out the get focused element line, try it right. now. Right, so this is going to get an element from a specific location on the screen, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, and, and you just got it from here. Okay, I got it. And this is the, the middle of the, <laughs> okay, so the middle <laughs> of the window. I get it. Yeah. So you just actually went ahead, it activates. Oh, that failed. Okay, hold on. Interesting. Let me double check on that. Um, uh, no, UIA, UIA. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Okay. It says done, but I didn't get anything. Hold on, did I, so focused element. Um, I did not message box the dump all, that's why. Um, so focused element dot dump all. Basically. There it goes, yeah, it is doing it. So now, yeah. there we go. So it's, so now, after I activated it, it actually went ahead and grabbed a point in the middle of the screen. That's what you were, and actually not the middle of the screen, the middle of the size of the window, the because it could be, oh. so if I have the window like this, the middle would be here. Right, so but if you, if you change those coordinates to the get when get position to using the mouse, like where the cursor is, right? Um, you can do that too. Cord. Yeah. Right. You can do that too. But say, for example, if my window was very small like this and I had it minimized, when I try to do this, I cannot get the mouse position because the mouse position would be outside of the window. You see that? So the, the mouse position right now, my mouse position is outside of where the yeah, Skype is. About it more of a discovery type tool where you could, you could move. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Sure, 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 sure. Yep. Yeah. I'm just true. saying it's very it would be very simple to adapt that to right instead of getting the position of the window itself we could actually get the mouse position right. and get the information for whatever the mouse is so th this is extremely um useful uh for for us to <laughs> uh, uh get elements that are not really accessible the only problem and this is the where we were discussing yesterday is that we would have to activate the window to get that information yeah. right so yeah. um that's where we would go with the tricky stuff to do it in a way that is not intrusive um, well I, I would i would just throw out there hey you know for those of us which maybe let's say it's half the people who i have multiple monitors i just want it automated right i can right. put it on another screen this is and freaking just, awesome. Yeah. Right, yeah, yes. Not worry about it. Like, oh my God, this would be amazing. Right. It, yeah. I and, understand. And point. you can you, you can add some uh, checks into it, whether Skype is uh, visible anywhere. And right. then you can get right. from that visible point. So it, yes. uh, it can be in the background and you can use the element from point even if it's not active, right? Yeah. It just needs to be visible. Yes, that's the only difference. So, so basically, um, you can always... Uh, you, you can, one of the ways that I would do it is just get the current position of the window, save it, you know, move the window into a minus 1000, minus 1000 to the X or Y, whatever, just move it outside of the screen, activate it, do whatever I'm going to do, and then restore the position when I minimize it. And, and you didn't even know that that happened because it was outside of your screen and it's not going to actually bother you at all. But um, that is one of the ways how I would go about that particular problem. Now, I do like this uh, thing, the walker. I had never actually used it, but now I understand it a little bit better. Um, and again, it, it just the walker itself gives you the functions that you need, the parents, siblings, last children, you know, the last child, first child. So this is the, the, the tree walker element is the one that actually gives you the, the way of accessing parent and children. And it, it was reminding me of like XML, right? How strong yes. XML is. Right, exactly. Yeah. But you don't get that. You don't get that when you get an element by itself. So whenever you get an element from point or get focused element, you don't get none of that information. You're just getting that one element. That's the thing. So the element doesn't have information about the parent-child relationships. And uh, there have been questions whether you can use the, the tree walker multiple times. And the answer to that is yes. So you can get the next sibling uh, that 
that uh, call returns you a new element, and yeah. then you can call it again with the new element. Oh right! So you could you could you could definitely just find you know get like get uh, get next next sibling and then just do the get next sibling again right two times like you can exactly. go right, right you can go two siblings if you want or something like so that. So actually, in this case, um, I'm not sure that you can because it returns you an element. Right, and you right. can't call get next tip. Oh, you element. would have to actually get the tree yeah. walker again on that yeah. element. All oh, right, yeah, I get exactly. it. Exactly. Okay, so but in general, you can you can, but but now that I have my tree element already here, I could reuse it, right? So I don't have to create a new tree walker again. No. Yeah, the tree walker already exists. Exactly. So basically, I could just go ahead and so this is going to return an element. I have it in here. And now I could just go ahead and say, you know, for that element. So I want to get the next sibling for that element. So I could just call it again. So the first one was for the focused element. So I get the next sibling for the focused element. And I save it. And this one, I could actually get the next sibling of it as well. And that would be exactly. a second element in here. So basically, I could definitely just crawl it, which if you have a loop, you can just loop over all the siblings in a in a in a tree, which is okay. I understand the the, the idea behind it. This yeah. is one thing. Expect if you're doing this type of automation with UIA, expect to be using a lot of loops if you're crawling up up a tree up and down because then you you might not want to be typing a lot of. <laughs> the same code over and over again is just a loop and it's a little bit easier. Uh, and uh, I, I tried to simplify that um, in the in the newest new uh, interface version uh, where uh, find by path has been upgraded. Uh, so you can get um, uh, any parent element or any sibling element as well. So you can uh, right. find by path plus three which would get the third sibling. Oh, element. right. That's awesome. So that is actually something. No, you, you uh, for now, I just see that you added some files, right? But I do not I do not see that particular update yet, right? Uh, can you check your uh, find by path method? By path, this one? Yes. Uh, OK, yeah, this is the old one, unfortunately. Right. Now, but 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 I haven't updated it yet because I'm I'm here one line be yeah. below. Okay. So if I get that, the the thing is that the the comment didn't actually uh, let me know if that was the new update or something. Find by path. Right. So there find by path. It has the C now, which this C might be the the next. Okay. Let the child, the next child, no, so how many children? The condition. The condition. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, but but here's the thing: um, the comment on the on the thing didn't let me know what it was, so <laughs> that's why I, I thought that it was not that. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, in general, um, can we see an example just real quick of using just so people see using the the um, condition? The condition would be like, yeah, so find by path. We were talking about I mean, this like being really powerful, right? Right. Like, so I have, I'm going to find the path uh, number three. The, can you show us the focus element uh, first? Uh, um, what the tree looks like with okay, the dump so, hole method? Yeah, dump hole. So let's try that. Let me just remove this dot. It's doing it. Okay, so here we go. This is my. Mm -hmm. So I could grab, for example, and this the condition is going to be like the, the the third the third sibling or the third child. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, if um, in this case, I think we can uh, get the, get around the, without it because we already have the whole tree, right? Right. Yes. Uh, so if if we had. Um, some uh, some sibling of it, or uh, sorry, uh, some so child of it. For example, I don't know. Now look, look at this. One, so one. so let me let me let me double check. So here the number three yeah. has one child. Number yeah. three has one child. So yeah, I but could you go can ahead. get that element with the point by path three point. Exactly. 
Yes, yes, I could do that. But I could also say find by path. So find by path. And then I would say three. And, and I don't know how many there are, but I, I want the, the first one, for example. Is that something that I could do? Or I have to create a condition like you, um, you, I automation. Um, so dot condition, was it? Create condition. Uh, create condition. Yeah. Create condition. Um, and I would say like uh, child. What, what would be the condition here? Uh, what do you want it to be? <laughs> Oh, well, I just want to get the next child. Uh, if you want, to, uh, then you can just um, uh, do um, first. First, get that element, right? Find by path three, and uh, then you can uh, call find by path again on it with, uh, for example, plus one to get the next one. All right. So I could just de definitely just double check and then plus one. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. So basically, I got the one that I want, and from there, I just want to get the next one. Yes. So, so exactly. what you're saying is that this number that I'm referring to here not only can be a, a, a very specific path, but it could be a relative path as well. I could say focused element plus yes. three, and that is going to find the third one. Exactly. And you, can, is, combine, and you can combine these with a dot. So you can do oh. plus three dot one. All right. Right. Okay. So that would tell me find the main element. So find by path. That's going to be the, the number three. Sorry, three from whatever element this is. Yeah. And then find the first child. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So basically what we're doing is just using relative notation, not yes. actually something very specific like this, because this is st static. It's the 3.1. Yes. That's the one. But I want to say like, well, from the 3.1, let's say that that was, and, and this is what I was wanted to kind of like see. When I do that, I should get the, the yeah, here, look at the name. You see, I got the text, yeah. right? So now um, in our case, I could definitely use um, path, uh, like, like instead of having a very specific number, I could find the, uh, uh, a base element, which I have already have it, which is the focused element. That's the my base, and now from there, relatively speaking, I would find an fifteen out. You know, exactly. like 15, 15 out, and let's go ahead and see from the focused element what the fifteen children would be. I don't know what it is, but it's not a static one; it's a relative to the main one that I got. And so, you can also get the parents by uh, writing p in front of the number. Oh, okay. So P in front of the number, like plus P1? No, just the P1. I could not mix them. No. no. All right. So uh, let's say, for example, the parent of three would be the same uh, document so this element. Would, this would go up three times. Oh, you would go up three times. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. this would give me the document First element. Part. Right, so this would give me the, the, the yes. document, yeah, the, 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 exactly. the pain, right? Here we go with the pain, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So now you don't have to loop uh, the tree worker that so much. So All much. right, so I would not need, to, now this is the second parent. So from the document, if I go, uh, sorry? grandparents. <laughs> right, yeah, the grandparents, <laughs> it's true, <laughs> exactly. So basically from the document element, I went up to, by two, um, and that's what's giving me now the desktop panel, at which uh, to see it graphically, you will notice now what is going on. So if I have Skype here, oh, come on. So if I have Skype and I take a look at the, uh-huh, there we go. So this is my document. So my first parent would be the window, the grandparent would be the pain Skype. And by using this notation, I should get desktop one, which is the second one up here. So from, oh, hold on, let me go check. Yeah. Uh, by the way, in Skype, the window element doesn't always exist. Oh, <laughs> so you would actually jump it. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes, and I get it the, sometimes the disappears. 
Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> That's why we're getting the document element, not the window. Right. Not the window. Right. <laughs> Okay, but in general, that's what it's doing. It's actually automatically crawling up the tree yeah. to find it. Okay. And if you see it, uh, for example, uh, P1 plus 1. Oh, right. It would go up and then go backwards once. So because, uh, because the plus it, 1 goes forward. Yeah. The plus uh, goes forward. Yeah. The legs goes sibling. backwards. Right. But it is always siblings, not children. Um, so... Um, if you put plus or minus, then it uses either get next sibling or get previous sibling. Uh -huh. Right. It stays on the same level. Uh -huh. If you don't put plus or minus at all, then it gets the child. The, the first child. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, the first child. And uh -huh. if you put P in front of the number, then it, it goes the up the tree. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I just for consistency, I would have had the instead of the the child, I would have had a C C one. Right, C one, C two, so so that P anyway, it's P cool. one, C one, yeah. it would make it a little. But the problem is, it would make it a little bit more difficult because for uh, this is very easy for us to understand. Three point one, yeah. and basically you're actually saying the third child getting the first one. So this is kind of like the default. You're always speaking about the children. That's what and happens. This is, the, this is the result of the dumb poll function, right? So right, we exactly. Can just copy paste it. Right, exactly. So we just copy paste yeah. it and that's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But basically, this is getting um, the third child of the focused element in this situation. Yeah. And after first, I get third it. Third child and then the first child of, of the that. Third. Exactly. So this yeah. one actually gets the first child off of it. Can you do another dot one to get the kid off of that? <laughs> yeah, so if there were many others, yeah, you yeah, could do that. Exactly. You could definitely, and that's the reason why you get these paths, these long paths that have like many dots in it, is because that is a child of another child. Of, yeah. Right, it's the whole hierarchy, exactly. But basically, in our case, um, that's the reason why he didn't use the C, because that's the default kind of way of going about it. Um, yeah, cool. So I, I did actually, again, enjoyed uh, learning about another tree walkers because that actually allows me to get the information that I was referring to yesterday about getting the parents and stuff like that. Um, when you use the by path, you already have to know at least the number of the path that you're looking for, like the 3.1, 3.2. Yeah. But in this particular case, when you have a tree walker, you don't have to know it because... Yeah. Here, I got the focused element, right? And now I could definitely just say, um, uh, well, it would be the chromium here, dot get next sibling, and I just pass my focused element. And that, even if I don't know the number, so I don't know if it is 3.1 or 2.0, I don't know what the number is, the tree walker would figure that one for me. And it, was, and it is just going to return the element that I'm looking for. So um, basically, it actually allows me to find elements without having to know their specific path because it would look for it for me. That's it. And uh, Joe, you, you asked uh, why this isn't uh, a function by itself, right? Uh, why can't we use it on all the windows? Uh, this is because it has a number of drawbacks, right? Uh, first, uh, the window has to be visible or it has to be active. Uh, with element from handle, we can get the stuff from inactive windows also, or, or even sometimes hidden windows, like we saw with the Spotify. Yes, and, so basically, uh, that's the reason why we, we, we actually do not use the element or focused element that often. Even yes. though it worked in this particular case, that is an outlier, you might always want to use a handle instead. It's a little bit easier, I would assume. And, and this uh, works best in Chromium elements or right. Chromium windows because not all windows have the document uh, control sure. type element at all. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't work very well. Very good. Now, um, now that we understand more or less what is going on, which is that we're getting the focused element, we're creating a tree walker, we know how those work. Um, 
we can basically say that this particular example is at least clear, right? Can we take a look at another example, the one that you mentioned about well, the Chrome? Let's just, yeah. let's stop, uh, but I think it's a great lead into Chrome. Let's stop the recording and then we'll start it up again. That way, if people want to watch it in sections, it's a little... Yeah.